Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Death Guard Space Marine and this model in particular is from the Space Marine Heroes collection and this is not to be confused with the, the Loyalist Space Marines because there's two separate collections um, so if you want this make sure you get the, uh, the Death Guard uh, version. Um, the model's obviously cleaned up and primed black uh, and I've used Ultimate Primer, which is by Badger in the US. Uh, there was the box that it came in. It also has this nice little card, so um, I don't know what it says. It's in Japanese. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Mike Lifton, he uh, picked these up for me. So anyway, uh, to start with, I'm going to be stippling on some uh, texture onto the armor, starting with Baylor Brown. Now, these paints are all watered down. Uh, it's around about 50-50 water to paint, so you should be able to see straight away when I'm applying it to the model that it doesn't give a very hard mark. Uh, it's very kind of translucent. This is important because there's going to be quite a few layers of stippling going on there. Uh, if you just take the paint straight from the pot when you start doing this, you're going to get a very kind of three-dimensional texture build up uh, quite quickly, uh, and it you know, it's going to look a little bit messy on the model and you're not going to get a nice smooth finish whereas if you do it this way you get the the look of the texture but without any of that paint build up and it also gives a, a much more subtle mark so it allows you to build up the layers slowly you have a lot more control over how you do it the model isn't completely glued together by the way so you might notice that his head wobbles every time it gets caught with a paintbrush uh, i've purposely left off um, parts and they just like, so the head is just tacked on uh, but the gun and the backpack uh, are also separate. It just lets me get, uh, take those parts off when I need to get into some of the more difficult to reach areas. The brush that I'm using is uh, an Artist Opus uh, dry brush. Now you don't have to use that. I, I just find this one's particularly like a, a nice size, you know, per perfect for what I want here. Um, but you can use things like makeup brushes and things like that to get a, a very similar effect. Um, here you can see how what I was talking about with the uh, the different parts of the model pulled off. So here's after quite a few layers of built up paint um, and you can see how it kind of um, I've positioned the uh, the highlights in specific areas so it looks like the lights hitting hitting the model from a kind of top left sort of perspective uh, angle uh, so the that's one of the other nice things about having the, the watered down paint and layering it up is that you um, you can kind of pinpoint the light areas on the model but still get texture into the other areas because as you add more and more layers they it works as kind of like highlighting and this is going to be pushed even further because now I'm using some more gas bone again around about 50 50 waters of paint uh, but test it anyway I have also washed the brush off now what you'll find is like normally if you're dry brushing and you wash the brush off in between doing your dry brushing it's going to make the the paint much more watery when you start doing it but because we're not dry brushing it's really important that you don't treat this as dry brushing you have to kind of stipple it on and you want to get the brush angled as straight onto the model as possible so you get little dots everywhere if you start dry brushing it's going to give lots of streaky marks especially because the paint's so wet uh, you know you just get very long kind of translucent brush marks and things and it's going to pick up edges we're not looking to pick up any edges this is all the f kind of like the, the flat and curved armor panels not we're not really interested in the trim now of course the trim's getting caught like all the details are getting caught because it's a it's a big brush and i'm just smacking the paint on there but uh, you know that's all going to be painted over afterwards and what you will find is when all these details are painted in it all looks a lot neater at the moment it's a bit messy because of all the texture work um, and they can see with the, the the model stuck together uh you know kind of how messy it looks but it, it also is working quite nicely with the, the texture effect on there i do like to stick the model together every now and then just to kind of check that everything's working as one you know make sure the light points line up uh, because there is there's always a danger when you kind of paint parts individually on a model that uh, you don't quite you know, get the lighting correct on each individual part because you, you're not comparing it to the other parts on the model. So I think you can see at that stage like how nice and textured it all looks. Um, and really, if you just wanted to get the, the model done quickly for an army, uh, you know, you're not far off finished at this stage. Really, you could just give it kind of like a wash and like pick out some of the trim and some metallics and things, and uh, I think that would be good to go. But I'm doing this to kind of like a slightly higher tabletop standard. 
so it's going to take a bit longer but hopefully the uh, the results will be worth it and it, you know if you want to just push it a little bit further it's not that far off we could take it to that you know a, a higher level for character models and things as well for your army so i'm using uh vol volupus purple <laughs> contrast paint um however it's pronounced uh this is just to kind of like fill in the gaps quickly i kind of like the the contrast paints for this because they've got you know fairly good uh pigment count but it also run you know they're very wet so it runs well into all the recesses and things uh, so all of the uh, i don't know what it is the kind of like the bubbly bits on the armor uh, those are all painted with that and then i'm using rhinox hide uh, to quickly paint in all the trims this, again this is watered down so this is about one and a half parts paint to one part water so it's a little bit thicker than the paint for the the armor and i don't really care about getting a perfectly opaque coverage on this this is just the base color for when i paint in the the metal parts the metal is going to be painted as non-metallic metal don't worry if you don't like that uh, it's purely personal choice all the other death guard models in my army are painted with non-metallic metal so it would be a bit silly for me to start painting them as uh, true metals now um but you know, if you wanted to paint them as true metals, you can do exactly the same process as I've done for the armor. Um, but you can then just ignore this next bit for for how to paint the trim. Although having said that, um, you know, you might be able to still get some useful information from it because really, when you're painting non-metallic metals, the the process is very similar to painting armor and things like that. Uh, and you can see, you know, there's a little jump there. Um, I've already painted in a few of the little parts, like around the uh, the neck and on top of the belly there. Um, you know these techniques really you know when you're using light volumes and highlights and things it's applicable to all different types of surfaces it just means it's just a variation of how kind of shiny or reflective the surface is so uh, it's just usually the case that metallic surfaces are, are more shiny so it requires a kind of a more specific type of highlight on it but really the, the type of painting doesn't change that drastically for, um, from surface to surface you know so calling something non-metallic metal is uh, something that's only really relevant to model painting for example if you were painting uh, like on a 2d piece you know there's no specific term for painting uh, a metal surface compared to say a ceramic or you know a cloth surface it's just all just painting but anyway so for the colors i'm using uh, obviously I, the base color you already saw that was rhinox hide now I'm also using some Vallejo colors. I have uh, Old Rose and Salmon Rose. Now Salmon Rose is uh, very, very pink. Um, and Old Rose is kind of a little bit more reddish. Both of them are slightly not the colors that I want specifically. So for uh, Old Rose, I've mixed in a bit of uh, Rhinox Hide. And you can kind of see where they're touching actually at the side. So in the bottom right hand corner of the wet palette, uh, that's the old rose mixed with it's i'd say roughly 50 50 it might not quite be that but that's what i'm using at the moment um just to you know block in some of the highlights and the light volumes uh, on the uh, the shoulder trim now you can see on the the wet palette there uh, that uh, 50 50 mix of uh, the rose uh, the old rose and the the rhinox hide how much the paint separates and how quickly it separates it you know it's starts doing it straight away uh, don't worry too much about it so it looks you know very messy on the wet palette but you can see as I'm applying it to the model it becomes quite clean and clear as long as you know beforehand what the color is going to look like when it touches the model it doesn't matter too much uh, the old rose I mean sorry the salmon rose that is around about 50 50 mix with ice yellow so I'm not using either of these two colors with you know straight from the the pot on the, their own um however i have painted uh, these non-metallics before so this is kind of like a a dodgy version of um copper i suppose um but i'm going to be putting verdigris on it later on so um you know don't worry too much about how accurate the colors are because it's it's not going to stay like this I mean, you don't have to put the, the verdigris on if you don't want, uh, and you'll see at the end of the video how it all looks together anyway. Um, but it'll be the next video when I, I put the verdigris and things on. So if you also notice, like, for how quickly I'm doing this non-metallics, you know, they're very kind of fast 
and quite rough looking. There's no need to spend a lot of time on them because when you do the verdigris, it'll sort of uh, soften it all and make it look a lot neater anyway uh, because it'll be kind of like glazed work on top of it. I'll talk about more that more in the uh, the next video. Um, obviously, the uh, the final highlight color is ice yellow. That's in the bottom left. If you don't have uh, salmon rose and old rose, it doesn't matter too much. You can use um, Games Workshop Bugman's Glow and uh, Gideon Flesh Tone. Uh, it'll be close enough that uh, you'll get like a nice result anyway. I have used those colors myself before. And I might even in the next video do a little bit more of the uh, the same kind of copper look. I mean, I know it's, it's like it's not the the greatest uh, color for copper at the moment. I, I am going to add a little bit uh, of Mornfang brown at the end just to add a bit more warmth to it. Um, but uh, for the overall atmosphere of the model, I want it kind of like a grubby kind of color. I don't really want too much of anything being like a bright warm color. So this is a bit more desaturated than uh, than you might want for a, a copper color, but it's still, you know, it works close enough, I think. Um, and just in case you're wondering, for desaturation, all that means is that you're either adding white or black to the color, so you're there's less of the, the main color, so it just becomes kind of less vibrant. So here you can see I'm adding in the, the Mornfang Brown. So this is adding like some warmth to it. Uh, it's kind of blending the uh, the layers together a bit because as I said, they're a bit rough. I haven't spent much time doing it. Um, the other thing is because I'm putting this over some of the highlights, so the uh, kind of the Salmon Rose and Ice Yellow 50-50 mix, the Mornfang Brown will show through more strongly on those parts, whereas on the, the darker shadowed areas, which are the Rhinox Hide, you're hardly gonna see anything. But, so it's kind of like in the mid-tones really that you're going to get the most of the, uh, the Mornfang, Mornfang brand showing because you don't really want to go over the brightest highlights because that'll just knock them back and make them look a bit too dirty and it'll kill the brightness for the non-metallic metal effect. Um, for when I applied the, uh, the Mornfang brown over it by the way it's quite watered down it's around about three or four parts uh, water to one part paint. So now I'm going to show you quickly how to paint one of the uh, like the pus boil things on his belly. Um, there is a one little further stage that I do that I don't show you in the video, but I'll uh, talk you through that anyway. So just to start with, uh, I went around the outer edges with the Rhinox High just to give it like a bit of definition and shadow. Now I'm using Badal Brown and you know, I'm just very quickly going over the top. Now this is watered down, it's watered down a little bit too much. So at the time that I was painting this, the temperature was really, really hot in the UK for UK standards, uh, but the uh, the paint was drying quite a lot on my paint palette as well because I had a, a fan going. So if you have like moving air over your paint, uh, it'll dry much quicker. Um, but to kind of like counteract the fact that everything was drying so quickly and I was so hot, uh, I was painting uh, with, uh, you know, slightly more thin paint than you necessarily would find the most suitable. So I think you can see here as I'm applying the, the Baylor Brown, it's a bit too thin for quick coverage. Um, I've got this, it's around about one and a half parts water to one part paint, I think. Uh, but you don't need it that thin. So I'd say 50-50 would be fine uh, and you'll get the job done a lot quicker. But, you know, it does. It did mean that I could do a few different layers, and it sort of blends in a bit quicker. But you do get a couple of spotty bits where it hasn't covered that much. And because I'm trying to do this quickly, uh, you know, a slightly thicker paint on these boils would definitely uh, get the job done quicker. So here I'm using some Mephiston Red and just painting in some uh, like veins on it, if you like. Um, these do not have to be super neat. I'm just painting them in kind of quickly and roughly again sort of like little wiggly lightning type lines uh, going towards the center and then I'll kind of join them up in random ways um, really don't spend too much time doing this because I'm going to be painting over the top of these as well so they'll works kind of translucently uh, it'll look like they're below a layer of you know a surface layer um, and the the amount of layers on top means that they'll you know you're, only, you're not even going to be able to see that all of the lines that I put on. So don't worry if you do the lines a little bit too thick. 
it'll all work out in the end. Uh, and in fact, if you do them too thin and too neatly, uh, you probably won't be able to see them later on. Uh, when you do this, I would suggest doing, doing them all at the sa same time. Uh, I just picked one so that I could show you, then I'd do the, uh, the other two uh, quickly and not having to worry about the pressure of the camera recording uh, what I'm doing. Um, but you know, uh, the same would be for you know the whole of the model for all the different parts. So where I've done the the non-metallic trim, do it all at the same time. Don't kind of do what I've done. Just do a few little bits and then leave it. Um, like I have to take into account the fact that I have to record everything. So uh, it's quicker for me to do little patches and record those and then you know, work on the rest off camera. Uh, especially in case I make any mistakes. But um, for you know general painting try and keep everything that you're painting the same way, do it all at the same time. So there you can see the uh, the red lines that I painted on with the Mephiston Red. As I said, they're very chunky, um, a little bit messy, you know, it doesn't, doesn't need to be amazing work and having them a little bit thicker uh, means that with this process, as you, you know, as we go along, um, they'll still stand out a bit. So now I went over them a little bit there with the uh, Bale Brown to start with, but and having that as a thinner paint does help. So all of this is quite thin paint. We're on the Morgas bone now. So this is the same as the uh, the armor color that we used. Uh, in fact, all three of these uh, highlight uh, colors I'm going to put on this are the same as uh, the armor color on the model and it's going to be a bit strange you'll see uh, because it looks different and it's all down to the way that the the paint's applied so um, and you're going to see as well that this make goes a little bit desaturated uh, and I kind of like how it looks but it does mean it doesn't stand out super strongly um, and, but that later on in the video it's going to look a bit uh, more yellow again and I'll talk about that after I've shown you this process just so that you understand what's going on at the moment. So I keep jumping back and forth a little bit between the uh, the Baylor Brown and the uh, Morgas Bone and also I have some Screaming Skull there on the uh, the palette. I know I said that all three of these colours are on the armour. Now you haven't seen the Screaming Skull on the armour yet but it will get there. Uh, the main thing to take from this is to get like a, a the correct light volume. So you're doing like a spot and like a roundish spot that's fairly opaque in the middle and then fades out at the edges. And you, it's all just applied pretty much just by stippling. Now, it takes a little bit longer uh, maybe than is ideal for, uh, for an army painting type thing. I mean, it's not too long. We're talking like a few minutes really. Um, but it, it's just worth it because it's kind of like a you know one of the main features on the model. There's like most of the model is armor, and it all looks very sort of similar. It's, you can punch up the highlights and shadows and things to make various parts look more interesting, but really there's not a lot of uh, variation on the model because of that. Whereas these three um, pustules on the the belly, they they're just like a really nice feature. They will catch the eye as well, so it's just worth spending a little bit of time on them. And also, uh, again, for these, keep the, the paint fairly thin. Uh, it'll just help with the blending. Um, oddly enough, it actually speeds up the process. So if you have the thick paint and you do stippling, you get very hard marks. And that means that it's actually harder to blend them in. Whereas the, the softer marks, because of the translucent paint, because it's watered down, means that uh, it kind of starts blending in straight away because the translucency means that the layers below uh, show through a bit. Uh, and then as you keep adding more and more layers, you can control exactly where the dots go. Uh, and you put more dots on in the middle, but then it becomes more opaque there. So pretty much just using the one color, you can get like a transition going from dark to light because in the darker areas, the darker paint beneath is showing through. Whereas in the middle, it isn't because you've added more for opacity. Um, so the, the main kind of interesting thing on the... Uh, the boil here is the uh, bounce highlights. This gives them a 
the implication that it's a slightly uh, shiny reflective surface. I'm just using the Morgas bone on the, uh, the bottom right hand side. So this is sort of opposite the uh, the shine, the, the big shine spot that's in the top left. Uh, and then you just do the, the little bounce highlight opposite. Um, it's the same process again, just little soft uh, dots placed on there. And it just gives it a very sort of 3D kind of shiny look. Uh, but don't go higher than the Morgas bone. Yeah, so you don't want um, the the bounce highlight to fight with the, the primary highlight for brightness. Uh, here I'm just adding a bit of white. I'm using P3 Mora White. Uh, you don't need to use P3 paint if you don't have it or you don't like it or whatever. I I tend to prefer uh, P3 Mora White as my primary white paint, but anything you know, from Games Workshop, Vallejo, whatever. Really, but you know, use uh, white paint that you like. It they're, they're all fine. So now I'm just going to fill in a, a few little parts of the models that anything that's uh, got holes in it. So this will be like the dents on the armor. There's a little black dot on the shoulder pad there. That's just a bit of paint that I've got on my finger uh, that's dry. So I saw that and I thought, oh, I've got some paint on the model. I'll turn that into weathering. Then when I painted it, it just fell off. So um, that's not actually painted on the model and it will vanish for the photo at the end. Um, you can just see here as well, I'm going back to the armor now. I'm going to be pushing the, the highlights. Um, just to quickly go back, so I was talking about the the holes. So if you look on the forearm there, there's another hole there. Also, there's holes in the eyes. All these areas, just paint them Rhinox hide. Um, I'm going to be working on those in the next video. Back to the armor panels. So now uh, we've got Morgas Bone, Screaming Skull, and there is some uh, P3 Mora White as well. Um, mainly Screaming Skull because remember you've already gone up to Morgas Bone on the armor with the stippling, but the stippling was done with watered down paint so it's probably not gone completely opaque when you applied it so there's still room for highlight levels going brighter using just more gas bone as you stipple on it and you're just pushing the brightest points really uh, focusing on uh, focal points as well so that will be like the top section of his belly his forehead uh, you know these forward points on the shoulder panels things like that. Uh, you don't really need to worry too much about the lower legs and feet things. You want to, uh, when painting something like this um, with the focal points, make sure that chest and head areas uh, get you know, more highlights, stronger highlights. That will then, when the viewers look at the model, that that's where they'll look first and foremost. That's Those are the mo most important parts to hit on the model. If you start giving every part of the model the same level of brightness, then nothing uh, is a focal point, nothing stands out. And it's actually less interesting having it like that. So it's actually easier, it's quicker, and it's more effective to paint less of the model. Now, when I say paint less of the model, I don't mean say just leave it black, obviously you still have to paint it, but um, to spend time making bright highlights on the model. So now I'm just gonna quickly paint up some of the, uh, the red kind of fungusy parts on I, I guess that's what they are some sort of fungus um, I now if you remember before I uh, gave them all a coat of volopus pink and I didn't care if I'd got some of the base armor color on them or not if you see it, it evens out fairly well um, so s some parts are a little bit darker than others where it only had the black primer and things it doesn't matter because um, I'm painting over the top parts of most of the area using corn red um, then uh, that's in the bottom right hand color on the wet palette the middle color is corn red mixed 50 50 with uh, fire dragon bright and then on the far left that's just plain fire dragon bright um, so you can see you can already see how quickly the uh, the paint's drying out on my palette there uh, although remember it's not real time when you see these things so uh, i'd already painted like a little bit on the model and left it open a bit, uh, wandered off and then come back. So it's it's taken a, a while to dry like this, um, but you know just keep in mind that you know with a very hot weather, if 
especially if you haven't put enough water on the wet palette, which uh, I hadn't done in this case. So actually my uh, wet palette was drying out, which is why the, uh, the paint wasn't uh, staying wet as long as I wanted. Um, because normally uh, with the temperature here is quite cool. So, you know, UK temperature is uh, notorious for being kind of rainy. <laughs> um, so normally you don't have to think about these kind of things. The paint stays wet very, very easily. Whereas as soon as it gets uh, a bit warmer, you do have to take the uh, precautions to, to make sure your, your paint lasts um, long enough for you to do what you want with it. So just going back to what I'm doing here, the 50-50 uh, so mix, I just kind of picked out some of the details going around the edges, um, leaving a, a good amount of the uh, corn red visible then for the uh, sort of the the penultimate highlight which is going to be the troll slayer orange i just go around and pick out various tiny little parts on the edges um you know don't spend too long on it again it it's just a, an interesting little feature the the red will contrast against the greeny look of the armor and the reason it looks green is because it's so translucent using the bale brown over the black. Anyone that's tried painting yellow over a black will know that unless you go completely opaque, it looks kind of greeny um, due to the translucency, uh, you know, kind of like mixing them together. So, you know, that's where I'm getting the, the kind of green look on the armor from. Um, you know, and it's, it's, you know, very kind of desaturated green. Um, but the uh, the red on these fungus things contrast against it quite nicely. Uh, so for the final highlight here, what I'm doing is I'm using ice yellow, so it's slightly off the, the camera there. But I'm just doing these little dots. Uh, and again, they're, they're sort of randomly placed, uh, but kind of like try and tie them together. And, you know, so it doesn't look but don't try and make it look too uniform. So don't put every dot in like the top left hand corner of each one. Uh, they should sort of work from one specific direction. There'll be more light hitting them. So you can see these ones at the front, they're a bit uh, more tightly packed together. And then after that was dried on, I went over them again with the Fire Dragon Bright. So it punches up the brightness of the orange. So uh, there we are. I've worked a little bit further on the model. There's gonna be another video where I finish it off and I show you how to do a few more things like the uh, like the drips of gore, like whatever it is, the green stuff coming out of him, uh, the, the little fungus like stalks coming out of the armor, like all the metal work and things uh, on the gun. So there's still a good bit more to do. Um, but anyway, I, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, there's, you know, I've got loads and loads of videos that I uh, need to do for YouTube. Um, and if you're interested in pushing your painting a little bit further, I do have a Patreon and a personal website that you can subscribe to, uh, which will, where I go more into depth on like high level painting, where I look at painting things for Golden Demon and things like that. At the moment, I'm working on an actual Golden Demon entry, which is, or rather two entries uh, primarily at the moment. Uh, one is Mephiston, uh, for the Blood Angels, and the other is a Warhammer Fantasy unit of vampires for the Soulblight Gravelords. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Uh, thank you very much again for watching, and I'll see you next time.